conceptual Jay stuff, sounded better than Jay. Jay. Things people talk Real about talk, it, I ain't throwing shots. All of the elements. <laughs> in on you. I am not going to be before you long, but I did want to take some time to share with you some of my labor over the last 10 years in attempting to address a very serious issue within the black community, and that is the rapid disintegration of black uh, male responsibility and performance through a, through the lens of understanding exactly how it has come to come about it's easy to sit up and complain it's easy to point the finger it's, it's easy to sit up and go oh my god shaking my head but i want to tell you why i'm so passionate about what we do here at the odyssey project especially through the programs like black men lead uh and other programs and even the programs we do uh for instance my wife's program uh restoring ghettos forgotten daughters it's with an understanding of how that connects to uh, the total socialization of our youth. But I'm going to read three small passages from three of my books. Uh, my 19th book, my 22nd book, and my 24th book. My 19th book is Born in Captivity, Psychopathology as a Legacy of Slavery. Uh, the 22nd book is The Undoing of the African American Mind, and the 24th book is Academic Apartheid. I want to kind of show you some consistencies in a concern that we need to address. I've been asking for support for a black man lead uh, for quite some time. I really want to kind of give you some insight on what's going on. I'm also going to post a link to these books in the description box, but I would really, truly... Um, uh, appreciate your support. As a matter of fact, anyone who uh, donates $100 or more will get a copy of the book of their choice, uh, either one of these books. On that note, I'm going to start with Born in Captivity, and I'm going to read from chapter 10. I'm going to read from chapter 10, and this is Special, special Education as a Socioeconomic Weapon. Um, the original paper that substantiates this chapter was commissioned by the Odyssey Project for the purpose of establishing an official position on an enigmatic issue that has been at the core of multitudinous conundrums within the black collective. For more, uh, for nearly 40 years, the special education system in the U.S. has been used as a mechanism to isolate and ostracize African American youth, especially young African American males. This, this chapter, uh, not only outlines this long-standing problem, but it also highlights the influence that institutional racism and cultural indifference play in the dynamic responsible for disproportionality. Here's a quote. The history of American education abounds with themes that represent the inextricable ties between citizenship in a de democratic society and a popular education, James D. Anderson. When I agreed to write The Miseducation of Black Youth in America, I decided to take an ulterior approach to unveiling the, and discussing the topic. While the public education system plays a prevalent and decisive, decisive role in the education of most African Americans, it is not the end-all and be-all to providing a holistic educational experience for our youth. Additionally, it is not only the substandard academic curriculums that present the greatest problem, it is the culture that encompasses the system, a culture that underwrites the inferiority complexes of African American students. When it comes to subpar curriculums, I am more concerned with the absence of holistic and accurate accounts of black history that extend beyond slavery and honor the major accomplishments of blacks socially, economically, politically, and environmentally throughout history. The primary theme of Carter G. Woodson's masterpiece, The Miseducation of the Negro, is that withholding the true and holistic history of any group will culminate in an identity crisis. And when a race of people suffers an identity crisis, they will begin to fracture along the lines of social responsibility and individual purpose. My goal in writing this uh, writing The Miseducation of Black Youth, which was my 16th book, and following it later with Academic Apartheid, uh, in, in America, excuse me, mis the miseducation of black youth in America was not simply to point out 
a nefarious and inadequate educational system, but the failure of African Americans to holistically educate our own, especially in historical significance and racial socialization. There is no sense of identity and purpose on a collective level. That was book 19. Book 22, The Undoing of the African American Mind. I'm going to be reading a very short passage in here called, uh, focused on identity crisis. Here again, we are on identity. Robbing a child of their history hides, the, hides from them the totality of their existence. Empirical and pragmatic evidence exists that reveals the fact that a person who does not have an adequate sense of identity or one that identifies with an inferior existence will be more likely to accept unfair treatment and injustice even in a nation or a geographic area in which injustice is not tolerated. Carter G. Woodson spoke of the power in having the ability to control what a man thinks. Woodson, who was a strong advocate of black children being aware of their complete history, pointed out that limited access to identity increases the ease at which a person can be controlled. In essence, a person who does not have a strong sense of identity to something of power and worth can e be easily can easily find themselves believing that their suffering is their lot in life. And book number 24, Academic Apartheid. Uh, this one focuses on the introduction of psychotropic drugs as a means of treating learning disabilities. If the psychological if the psychological devastation sorry about that if the psychological devastation associated with this diabolical machination of special education is not enough the system has introduced a prescription of psychotropic drugs into the equation the excuse me the prescription of psycho psych, uh, psychotropic drugs into the equation according to the National Institute of Health. There's an expanding problem as far as the use of psychotropic drugs as a means to treat behavioral and learning disorders in special education students. In a recent study, it was revealed that 40% of the students studied were on a, on a medication at their baseline level. The primary psychotropic drug was some form of, of, of stimulus, 26%. To exacerbate the matter, 17% were on psychotropic cocktails, meaning they were on more than one psychotropic drug at, at any given moment. Over the course of the study, the number of those who were consistently taking psychotropic drugs increased from 40% to 52%. The aforementioned numbers only paint a superficial portrait of the systemic issues at play in this dynamic. There are so many different platforms to examine in order to paint a panoramic view that that it will be impossible to present a comprehensive picture here. However, it is important to at least take a look at some of the major factors involved. Anytime pharmaceutical grade medications, and I use the word medication very likely because the truth is that they are simply legalized drugs, are involved, we are talking about the involvement of Big Pharma. When Big Pharma is involved, the bottom line is always profit, not healing. Right now, the prescription of psychotropic drugs to young black boys is a $50 billion per year industry. That was book number 24, Academic Apartheid. I have been diligently working uh, to engage the enigmatic issues that, we, that plague our community, uh, not just in the world of education and uh, academia, but uh, in every socioeconomic, political, uh, social and uh, geographic sphere. Uh, it has been my goal over 30 years to learn as much as I can, to be as impactful as I can, to offer solutions. One of the solutions I have, I have created is the ability to properly socialize young black men. When you properly socialize black males, you give them an identity, you give them a purpose, you give them a sense of belonging, you give them a direction, and you head them towards a responsibility that follows them into manhood. When you don't, you leave them at the whims of culture, you leave them at the whims of negative influence, you leave them at the whims of social media and struggle, and uh, they become uh, mentally discombobulated in a sense of not knowing who they are and so they search for themselves and they attempt to uh, uh, in, uh, assess and become without knowing what they're becoming 
And can you imagine the frustration of that? Can you imagine not feeling belo- not feeling as if they belong, not feeling as if they have a place, not feeling respected, not feeling acknowledged, not feeling that they can be heard or seen, but being asked to rise to an occasion to do something that they know nothing about because we have failed them, because the system has failed them, because we are exposing them to a toxic environment that is literally designed to destroy them and herd them in large numbers to incarceration. That's what the alienation is about. That's what special education disproportionality is all about. That's why we have some emotionally unstable and mentally unstable men uh, in growing numbers. That's why the suicide rate has increased extensively. That's why there is a problem with intimate partner violence and intimate partner homicide. We're not going to wish it away. We're not going to, oh my God, it and shaking my head it away. We are going to have to, at some point, say we're going to go in and we're going to start building strong men. And that means at a very early age, we have to start socializing them into who they are and what's expected of them and to show them why they belong, to show them why they important to show them what's necessary and what's expected and then we must insulate them and protect them from a culture of society and a system that looks to break them down beat them down and create what we want to call monsters we can't wait until we can't allow them to keep getting to 14 15 and the age geek keeps getting younger 14 15 16 and expect we can go in and have major uh, changes uh, and, and we can we can do work and I will continue to do work I'm addressing young black males from the age now of 15 is I think my youngest at this particular moment on up and I'm telling you it's challenging because the world isn't built for them and they need help understanding themselves understanding the system understanding what's expected of them understanding how they become And it doesn't just happen because they want it. It doesn't just happen because we want it for them. We are going to have to be a part of the solution. Back in December, I did a week-long, what I thought would be a week-long fundraiser to raise $10,000. Right now, I think we're at $700, four months in the game. Um, And that goes to show you just how hard it is to create resources for these young black males, but yet I'm still here. I'm still fighting, I'm still taking in, I'm still working to the best of my ability to do everything I can to reach these young black men. But I'm challenging everybody to step up, show some love. Like I said, anybody that donates at least $100 today will get their choice of one of these books. Or you can go in and buy the book, (coughs) buy the books or whatever, or you can do both. But we have to start moving in a way that's measurable and big enough and and, and impactful enough to make a difference. We're losing this war. And if we lose, the results will be catastrophic. On that note, I'm out of here.